I'm gonna start with this, bro. Look, Iowa's Kaitlyn Clark. She's obviously been the face of the NCAA basketball, both men's and women's basketball. College basketball, the face of college basketball right now is Kaitlyn Clark. If you don't know that, you gotta do some research. Watch this girl play, look at some clips. This girl looks like Steph Curry in college basketball right now. I'm, I'm so serious, no exaggeration to any bit, like not even a little bit. But here's the thing, Iowa's Caitlin Clark is 65 points away from breaking the all-time scoring record for women's college basketball that's currently held by Kelsey Plum. But even greater, here's another thing that makes this like so much more special is because not only is she gonna break the women's college basketball record, she's 205 points away from becoming the all-time leading scorer in college basketball history, both men's and women's basketball in college. An insane, absolutely insane for her. And this is a Pistol Pete record here. So, you know, those historians out there, just know this, this is a legendary record here. And I'm going to tell you, she's going to break the record because... Bro, I, there's seven games left until the tournament starts. There's seven games left of this regular season, and she averages 30 a game, 34 to be exact, but she's giving you about 28 at a minimum each game. Seven games times 30, 210 points. So she's going to easily get that 205, and, and I'm, I'm so excited about it, but she still has the March Madness to go through all of those different things as well. So the reason I even bring all of this up, though, is just to let you know, like, women's college basketball will continue to evolve and become bigger and better than men's college basketball a lot sooner than we think. So people think this is far out. You know, they see the WNBA progress, and they see the, the women's college basketball progress, and they're like, oh, yeah, at some point, you know, women's college basketball is going to surpass the men's college basketball. I'm here to tell you right now, look, this is already the case, bro. I mean, they have a more concentrated pool of talent in women's college basketball right now. If you're an elite talent and you play basketball as a woman, there's only this one space you can go to show off your talent. There's about seven or eight different women right now that are putting on consistent big shows every single time they step on the floor because they have no other option to go play basketball. When you think of the men's college basketball and this age group that they're in, 18 through 23 college basketball, they got so many alternatives, which is why it's kind of hurting college basketball right now for the men's sector. And obviously, you know, they're the same, you know, company, whatever, they, wherever you want to call it, same same brand of NCAA. But in terms of men's basketball, they're feeling this impact because guys have so many different alternatives to go play basketball. It used to be, OK, you had to go play college ball if you want to get in the NBA or you had to be that guy out of high school in order to go to the NBA. And with men's right now, there's so many different alternatives of leagues you can go play in the g league you can go play overseas you can go play with overtime elite which is another alternative league and then yet there's been rumors of the nba uh, allowing uh, teams to draft out of high school again so that gives people another option to go play college bass or to go play something other than college basketball because it, it's it's crazy but no matter how you try and slice it how you try and look at the perspective the women don't have that option they don't have that option at all. No matter how corrupt the NCAA gets, no matter how cor corrupt the NCAA are, like women have to go play college basketball if they want to make it pro. That's literally their only option. If you're an elite basketball player as a woman, you got to go one place and one place only where all the good women and all the sweet women are playing basketball, which is the NCAA. And, and I mean, an, another thing too, you don't really see here, which, which I love out of women's basketball, and I hope they don't change this because it's really turning out to help them a lot, is that you, know, you, you see the best of the best all in this one area, but there's no one and done rule. You're at least playing three years if you're a star in, in women's college basketball right now. You can't get drafted from high school, so you got to go play at that next level. And there's going to be more and more competition year after year because as all of these elite women play basketball in this small space with women's basketball, the competition is going to rise because you got stars freshman year putting up 50 points they got to stay around for another three years so that's that's more entertainment that's more viewers that's more notice that fans are are really coming to realize that damn oh juju watson she's putting up 50 oh she's got two more years left oh this is about to be crazy she might even stay for her fourth year as well like 
you don't have that in men's college basketball right now. And ultimately, I think all of this stuff makes me more excited to watch women's college basketball coming up March than the men's because, bro, it's been multiple 50-point games. I mean, they've been on a tear, bro. When you when you look at the storylines that's been going on between Caitlin Clark and, and uh, Juju Watson, Madison, Con all these different women – have great storylines with the NCAA right now. There's been multiple 40, 50 point games. You got literal women literally balling too. It's not just the numbers that look good, bro. Like Kaitlyn Clark, Madison Connor are both averaging more three point makes than Steph Curry and JJ Redick did when they were in college. JJ Redick and Steph Curry were elite three point shooters in college. You got two women that are averaging above what they did when they were in college. It's insane. Deja Fair just put up 38 on, on Sunday, I think it was. Sunday, yeah, Sunday or Saturday. Juju Watson put up 51. Like, bro, we're not seeing this type of stuff out of men's college basketball right now. And, and you know, typically we would, but I also think that narrative of, of, you know, oh, this prospect is the next LeBron and this prospect is the next Jordan and all of that stuff. I think that stuff is really just getting so watered down, bro. We are tired of hearing this guy is the next him and this guy is the next. Like, bro, come up with a new narrative in order to really help men's basketball. And I think some of the rule changes and stuff, too, you know, are hurting as well. I can go on and on about the things that's hurting men's college basketball. But above all, I'm seeing Chris Brown, Quavo, uh, Sweetie, all of these celebrities lining up to watch USC women's basketball, lining up to watch Kaitlyn Clark at Iowa. Like, she has arenas sold out. She has lines packed blocks away <laughs> i'm not seeing that type of stuff with men's college basketball bro like it's, it's insane to me and even when i think about last year too and like this is my final point i'll wrap up here but like thinking about last year in the championship games with college basketball we already know right off the back iowa play lsu and that was a tremendous game they played the day before the men's game and it was absolutely insane but when the following day happened and the men's had to play, it was uh, UConn and San Diego State. Yeah, I think it was San Diego. When men's had to play uh, UConn versus San Diego State in a championship game, it just wasn't even the same, bro. It wasn't even as, as intense. None of that. It was like, just, a man, it, it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. Like, the, the game wasn't as good. Like, it was, it's, it's just different, bro. It's just different. And I've always been a firm believer that, you know, with women's basketball, they have to be a lot more tactical. They have to be more decisive. They have to be sharper with their moves because they can't rely on athleticism to bail them out of bad situations that they get themselves into. Like, we watch men's college basketball, and yeah, obviously, the main thing is, oh, are these guys dunking? They can't dunk, whatever, whatever. But... A lot of guys are just athletic, and that's the only reason they're even playing college basketball. Whereas women's college basketball, no, you got to have some skill. You just can't be athletic as hell, and people love you. No, you got to have skill. You got to know how to shoot. You got to know how to dribble. You got to know how to create a shot. You got to know how to have footwork on your offense. You got to play defense. Like All of these different factors are, are part of the reason why we're seeing such great talented women in college basketball right now and people are actually taking notice so i'm loving what i'm seeing bro and, and this it's so dope it's so dope to watch so i'm super excited for the tournament uh man I, i'm excited for the tournament I, i'm not i don't have a pick or anything yet but i'm gonna leave you with this south carolina right now are 21 and 0 21 and 0 they haven't lost a single game and i believe they got three people on their team averaging double digits right now so that alone tells you, if you're going to watch some college basketball, first start with Iowa because you got to watch the Kaitlyn Clark show and then watch South Carolina because they're going to have some good basketball. You're going to understand what I mean when I say they play good basketball. So I'm going to just leave it there.